Hey there! Hello! And once again, welcome to Biopandit, your one-stop comprehensive bioinformatics training platform. I am delighted to introduce myself as Saurav, your very own Mahapandit. And today I am going to talk about a very important concept in structural biology, DNA sugar puckering. Those of you who have watched our video on nucleotides know that a nucleotide consists of three parts. A hydrophobic base, a ribose or deoxyribose sugar, and a phosphate. Here in this lecture, we are going to focus only on the sugar part. So, let me first show you the nucleotide backbone sugar. Here we go. This is a DNA molecule. You can see the backbone represented as a tube and base pairs shown as ladders. Now, let me present a more detailed view. Here we go. That's at molecular level. Now let me remove the bases and show you only the sugar phosphate backbone. Here I highlight the bases in green and remove them. Now you can easily see the pentameric sugar rings. Now let me show you one ring. Now let me orient it properly. Here. Now you can see what I want to show you. The sugar ring is not planar. This non-planarity is termed as sugar puckering. You might think, what's the big deal if the sugar ring is not planar? Well, it is a big deal. Evidence exists that sugar pucker can influence both nucleotide incorporation and extension by polymerases. Nucleotides that are constrained to a 3' endo conformation are preferentially incorporated by RNA polymerases. Conversely, nucleotides that prefer the 2' endo pucker are preferentially incorporated by DNA polymerases. So you see guys, sugar puckering is important. So if something is important, we need to measure and analyze. The precise description of a deoxyribose ring puckering can be completely specified by five endocyclic torsion angles within it. We are not going to describe torsion angles here as you will find a beautiful illustration of that in the video on protein dihedral torsion angles. Let me just show you the figure for boosting your memory. A dihedral torsion angle is defined between two planes. To calculate the angle, you need to know the equation of the plane. How to get the equation of the plane? Well, you have to calculate it from the geometrical location of the atoms that define the plane. So, we are going to define similar torsion angles here. Remember guys that you don't need to memorize the atom names and respective angle names, but you need to understand the concept. Sugar puckering arises in order to find the most stable conformation. Naturally, as we are so much interested in puckering, I think we have already guessed that a planar ring is not the most stable conformation. If you are thinking that puckering happens due to the presence of that oxygen atom, which is electronegative, then that's not true. Even benzene rings are not planar. Let's come back to geometrically measuring sugar pucker. If you define a plane including the O4 prime oxygen and any two carbon atoms, at least one and at most two carbon atoms will always be found off plane. In principle, there is a continuum of interconvertible packers separated by energy barriers. Now you see guys that this situation is not very comfortable. You need to think about five angles simultaneously to define all the puckering states. Yes, I know, that's not cool. So let's simplify things. Let us translate all the information there are in these five angles into just one angle. All the puckering states can be succinctly defined by a single shift rotation phase angle, the definition of which you can see here. You no longer need to define five angles, but only need to consider this one angle to define all the puckering states. The maximum degree of pucker can be directly obtained from this pseudo rotation phase angle. You can see the definitions here. Now, while learning about sugar puckering, you need to keep in mind two terms, endo and exo. I just told you that carbon atoms can displace from the sugar plane. 
if this displacement is towards the C5 prime atom, then that twisted form is called the endoform. A displacement in the opposite side of C5 prime atom is called the exo. Now, which atom is displaced? Based on that, we name these twists. For example, I have shown you two examples where C2 prime and C3 prime atoms are in endoform. Now, let me show you some geometrical constraints associated with the definition of pseudo rotation phase angle. According to the definition, the sum of the five torsion angles is zero. You can see the theoretical changes of the five torsion angles during one pseudo rotation phase angle cycle in the range is zero to 360 degree. At every phase angle P, the sum of the five torsion angles are always zero. Now, different pseudo rotation phase angles represent different puckering states. Let me take you directly to the pseudo rotation wheel for a full picture of the puckering states. This is called the pseudo rotation wheel or the pseudo rotation cycle. You need to clearly understand this concept, guys. The cycle represents different puckering states for different pseudo rotation phase angles between 0 to 360 degree. There are conformations in which one ring atom is out of the plane. In these cases, we say that the pocket type is envelope and denote it as E. Deviation of two atoms from the plane is more common and these conformations are known as twist, denoted as T. Envelope E and twist T forms alternate every 18 degree. Why 18 degree? See the twist conformation when C2 rotation phase angle is 0 degree. Both C2 prime and C3 prime deviate from the sugar plane. When phase angle increases to 18 degree, tau 1 and tau 3 increase 10 degree each, while tau 2 remains nearly constant. This drives C3 prime further away from the sugar plane while pulling C2 prime into the plane. This is how envelope and twist forms alternate every 18 degree. So you see guys, the pseudo rotation wheel implies that the deoxyribose puckers are free to interconvert. Obviously, there are energy barriers between major Packard conformations. Here is the plot of conformational energy of a deoxyribose furanose ring for different Packard conformations. You can clearly see C2 prime endo and C3 prime endo are the energetically most stable conformations. Remember guys that these two conformational states are required to bind DNA and RNA polymerases respectively. The notion that energetically the most stable conformation is the functional structure is nearly universal in biochemical world. Globular proteins are good examples where the folded state is probably the most stable conformation of the respective polypeptide chain. I am saying probably because so far we have not found any exception does not mean there is no exception. So this is all for now guys. For further information about amino acids and nucleotides, please keep watching the other videos of Biopandit. Please feel free to contact us in biopandit at the rate gmail.com and in our Facebook page with solutions, requests for videos and asking for technical help. If you like our videos, hit the like button and help others by sharing it. For more updates, please subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. Bye guys. See you soon.